Hello all. Welcome to Vesomer Tech Heal Your Heart EECP Treatment Center. Today in this video, we are going to discuss about coronary angiogram. It is a procedure in cardiology, which is a diagnostic tool to find out how many blocks do you have in your coronary vessels or the blood vessel which is carrying the blood to the heart muscles. So it is very important to know how many blocks do you have or where the blocks are or what is the percentage of obstruction. These are all very important to decide whether you will be benefited with a bypass surgery or angioplasty. So when we talk about coronary angiogram, it's a little bit riskier because comparatively, when we look at all other diagnostic procedure in cardiology, coronary angiogram has a very high risk when compared to the other procedures. So when you say it is a very high risk procedure, it is only reserved for people who are at very high risk or moderate risk of heart disease. So unless you don't have this patient have a high risk, you should not try to do a coronary angiogram as a routine procedure. As a rule of thumb, if the patient has a high risk, then they can be exposed to a high risk procedures. So coronary angiogram comes under the category of high risk. So why we consider coronary angiogram as a high risk? For example, when a patient, uh, when they're going for a coronary angiogram, there is an inherited risk because of the procedure. This risk involves a, a procedural myocardial infarction, death or very importantly contrast uh, induced nephropathy which may cause renal dysfunction or in fact sometimes lead to acute renal failure. This procedure can also lead to infection, dye allergy, stroke and embolism and all this together which is considered as a major risk will attribute about 2% of the procedure. So if there are 100 patients undergoing a coronary angiogram two of them will end up having a major complication. So we have to be very careful in choosing who will undergo a coronary angiogram. And one of the important things patients should understand is if they are elderly with diabetics, then the chances of having acute uh, renal failure or renal complication is much higher than the, the general population. So uh, when we talk about uh, coronary angiogram, so these are all the pictures which comes into your mind before attempting it. Now, who would go for a coronary angiogram or what is the recommendation in the guideline which are all the patients should go for coronary angiogram. And patients should understand very clearly the coronary angiogram is not just done to identify the number of blockage. Because many patients comes to me and said like, how would the doctors know if they don't do a coronary angiogram and find out how many blocks do I have? Of course, coronary angiogram is not just uh, done to look at the number of blockage. It is only done to make sure which procedure is better for you, whether it is a bypass surgery or an angioplasty. So if a patient is not willing to go for a bypass or angioplasty, coronary angiogram is not at all indicated. In fact, I could say it is contraindicated because they are going to be exposed to a uh, unwanted risk of 2% of major complication without achieving anything in benefit. And of course, as I was talking earlier, coronary angiogram is not done to find out the blockage and to implement the treatment. As I said, the procedure is only to uh, do the treatment for a bypass or angioplasty. For medical management or we consider as a conservative management, you don't require an uh, angiogram to know how many blocks you have. Another important thing is uh, people who come for angiogram uh, when they are on a low risk. So people who are asymptomatic, which they can do very good exercise tolerance, angiogram is not required. And uh, many times patient comes walking into a clinic with a TMT report and an angiogram. They ask us like uh, I'm TMT positive and uh, I, I was recommended for angiogram. Is it really required? Now, all TMT positive don't require to go for an angiogram at all. It depends upon your symptom and your exercise tolerance. If your symptoms is not there and your exercise tolerance is good. In fact, in your treadmill, let's say you have achieved around 12 to 13 or 14 minutes, which is roughly equal to 10 to 13 minutes, then you don't require angiogram. The reason is it's statistical. For example, a patient with a treadmill positive who are asymptomatic, good exercise tolerance, who achieved around 12 to 13 minutes in the exercise and their meds level is around 12 to 13 meds. 
then the chances of them having a heart attack and death is around 1% in 5 years. So they are considered as a heart disease patient, but they don't have to be treated aggressively. They don't require an angiogram. The reason is in 5 years, the chance is 1%. And previously I've clearly shown if you go for an angiogram, in fact, if you put the patient for an angiogram and table his risk is around 2% on that day. So to uh, reduce a risk of 1% in 5 years, it is not worthy to go for a risk of 2% on table at that particular day. So that's why I said uh, the important thing for the physician is to make sure coronary angiogram is done as a last resort when everything fails and the physician or your cardiologist or cardiothoracic surgeon is planning you to go for a bypass and angioplasty. Only in that incident, a coronary angiogram can be a useful tool with a cardiologist and cardiothoracic surgeon. Bypass surgery, angioplasty. So, this is EECP, Enhanced External Counter Pulsation, Heal Your Heart, Vasomeditech, EECP Treatment Center.